Welcome back to the JCR Off-Road Garage or the Victory 4x4 Garage. It depends on which website you're watching this video on. My name is Daryl. Today I'm going to show you how to install our universal cargo basket. I'm standing on it right now. Things made of aluminum. It's really fantastic. Super easy to assemble. We designed this so you can mount it kind of anywhere. On top of your bed racks, underneath your bed racks, even on a roof rack. Heck, you can even mount this on top of your factory Cherokee rack if you got creative with the mounting. That was kind of the idea behind this. A basket like this is great for those times when you want to pick up camp really fast. Just throw it on top of the basket, throw a tarp over it and drive home. Maybe you want to store wood up here. Maybe you want to store bike tires up here, whatever. Um, I find it super, super handy. So um, engineering, they're really busy right now and they didn't exactly tell me how to assemble this. So we're just going to figure that out together and it's going to be, going to be great. So let's get started. All right, so engineering didn't tell me uh, how this goes together, um, and I don't want to bother them because they're busy, so we're just going to kind of work our way through it together. And I mean, I've installed IKEA furniture before, and hardly anyone died after I built my Fjord and Fugan or whatever you want to call it. So uh, let's, just, let's just take inventory here, and we're going to figure it out. It's going to be, this is going to be fine. Okay, so let's see. We've got four crossbars here. We've got four side pieces here. And we've got three, I guess there's the bottoms. And we've got some bolts. So let's figure, let's just dump all these bolts out right here like that so we can kick them around the shop and loose a really important one. All right, I'm gonna guess that we're gonna take one of these side pieces here and move this out of the way. And if these are threaded, yep. These are threaded and there's some machine slots in these. So we'll put the machine slots up and we will grab some of this hardware. Oh, just one second. I'm going to grab some NICs. I'll be right back. Right back. I'm back. Okay. So I'm going to end up with NICs all over my body, but stainless into aluminum, we probably want to use a little NICs. So we're going to go through the outside of this rail into this threaded bar, maybe, maybe, there we go, with one, and I just used a quarter by one, it looks like, stainless button head bolt, and a little stainless washer, stainless SAE washer on there, and we will add another one, here. So we have the side here and uh, these button heads we're going to put through to the tapped holes and then we'll grab a looks like a 5 30 seconds T handle and we're just gonna tighten those down enough so that everything still slides so we can figure out where everything has to go here. All right now I'm guessing I gotta put one of these on here. So before I bury this, <laughs> before I bury this slot, it looks like one of these goes here. So looks like I gotta put four. There's a bunch of T nuts here. So these T nuts right here, it looks like I gotta use four of them. So I'll slide four in from the end. that and then it looks like probably these little quarter inch by look like three eighths maybe maybe half so we're gonna run these from the outside into those T nuts All right, there's one. Where's the other one? There you are. 
Great. So there's the fourth one. And it looks like this is exactly as long as the crossbar. Yep. So we will center this up on the extrusion. And then I guess I'll just center these button heads in the slots. And I don't think there's any danger in tightening these right now. Just snugging them up so they're not sliding all over the place. And I think on the other one, it might make sense to install this first before we install the crossbar on the side. So that makes a little more sense to me. So let's do that. So I'm going to do the same thing I just did before, but I'm going to do it first. I think that makes more sense. So is it going to be boring? I'm sure that you'll come back soon. Oh yeah, that's definitely the way to go. Install this side piece on one of these bars while it's on the ground. That's way easier than doing it the other way. Like a dummy. We're learning. We're learning. Okay, so once you get this done, uh, this piece here goes on the front. These two bars go in the middle. So this bar goes here. And this bar goes here, see? And then you get it. We're gonna use these uh, quarter inch by one button heads with their little stainless washers. Um, we're gonna go into the end of these uh, like we did before, into the threads. So you do that, I'll do that. We'll come back and we'll figure out what we're gonna do after that. Great. All right, now we've got a basket and everything is kind of loose. Um, so let's get the, looks like the floor installed. So it looks like the floor is going to mount on top of these extrusions and there's one, two, three, four holes on each side of that. So, uh, let's kind of, all right, so we shot a bunch of stuff to get here. Um, and we were wrong. So we're not going to show you any of that, but you know, you may be tempted to put these, these floor plates parallel with the crossbars and, uh, and you'd be wrong because you should have read the instructions. Um, like, like I should have read the instructions. Anyways, these go this way. They go uh, you know, perpendicular to the crossbar. So let's do, let's do that. <laughs> let's do that instead. <laughs> All right, so it's easier if you preload these T-nuts. So you're gonna have six in each rail. Um, on the front and back rails, they're gonna be on the inside. And then on these two middle rails, they're gonna be on the inside as well. So six in each one. And then I find it pretty, makes it a lot easier if you measure kind of where they're going to be and then pre-place them near that area just so you're not chasing chasing t-nuts through the holes so do that do that with all of your crossbars And also there's not slots milled on every face of these extrusions. So if you're gonna mount it some way where you need to bolt up through, like bolt up through into the T-slots, you should um, preload those T-slots before you tighten these sides down, just so you have maybe four in there somewhere. So if you're ever gonna mount it on a bed rack or something, it's super easy to mount. So definitely do that first. <laughs> Or you could leave these milled slots down and load these in before you put it together. Whatever you want to do, it's meant to be, it's meant to be universal. So just whatever you want to do to make it easy on yourself. Okay, so now that those eight are kind of in the general area where they need to be, we can set our first floor piece down like that. Then we'll grab one of the little stubby quarter inch button heads with a washer and we'll find our first T-nut and we'll just work our way down with these little button heads finding the T-nuts and we'll leave them loose so that we can move this around to center it up and that'll make our lives a lot easier. So we're gonna do that on this one 
And we're going to repeat that process for the next two floor pans. Leave everything loose and then we'll figure out what our next step is. All right, so once you get the floor in, leave all those bolts loose. And I think the best thing to do first would be to tighten up these side pieces and that'll make sure the floor is all centered. So align this side piece in the front up with this corner and then tighten it all the way down and then do that on both sides, all these bolts here. Then once you get both sides done, you can tighten up the front and the back, all of those mounting bolts, and then I would tighten the floor after that. And that'll just make sure the floor is centered all up in there nice between these extrusions. And like I said before, we're gonna include some of these little um, bolts right here, these little T-bolts. And if you're gonna use this rack to mount on top of something, uh, slide these in the bottom rails in this extrusion before you tighten these down if your slots aren't pointed down, like I said. So there, there's gonna be four of these in this bolt pack and that'll help you kind of mount it. It's meant to be universal, but these will give you kind of a start if you're mounting it to a bed rack or whatever you're mounting it to. Okay, so if you got this all together and you wanna slide some of these carriage bolts or some T-nuts in these bottom trays and you don't have any of the uh, machine slots for that, it's pretty simple. Just take out the bolts on one side of the extruded aluminum rail. So just remove two bolts totally. Then you can pry this down far enough just with your hands to install whatever you need to. We're gonna put two in here so we can mount it on our bed rack. And then put your screws back in. If you haven't already, go ahead and make sure all of your quarter inch bolts are tight on the sides, on the front, on the uh, floor, and then we can get this mounted up on a bed rack or on a roof rack or whatever, it's universal, so go almost anywhere, you got a nice flat spot to mount it. Okay, so we got this mounted up on our Gladiator here, an engineer came over and they said I was dumb and did a bad job and I forgot some stuff, so they're right. Um, here's some corner brackets, there's some little aluminum 90 degree brackets, and we have some 5 sixteenths, you can see them button heads and flange nuts. These corner brackets go right in here. They just support these corners, so if you strap off these sides, they add a little, add a little corner gusset support. So there's gonna be four brackets, eight bolts, eight nuts. They just go in here like this on each corner. And then besides that, they gave me, they gave me the thumbs up. We did a good job. We put this IKEA furniture together. Um, lots of mounting options like I talked about. Um, either in this video or another video, I'll show you how you can undersling it on our bed racks. We have some mounting brackets to do with that. Uh, you know, sky's the limit on where you mount this. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this product or any of our products here, give us a call 269-353-1184 or shoot us an email info at jcroffroad.com or info at victory4x4.com. A little secret. They go to the same place. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. So as promised, I want to talk about these brackets right here. These are an add-on to our universal basket. These are some additional mounting options for you. Uh, with the kit, you're going to get eight total of these brackets. So they're designed to bolt together like this or like this in various heights. They have some slots in them so you can undersling the rack underneath your, your bed rack, for instance. So these right here would mount up underneath into the extrusion. And if you turn this this way, you could mount it on top of your bed rack and get various heights. You could do it on the side if you had a bed rack that allowed for that. You could also take these mounts like this and you could just use four of them, clamp them on the side, and that would give you the ability to to raise this off from a roof rack that was slightly wider than this or whatever you were looking for. Uh, a quick word, most of our roof racks are the exact same width as this basket, like the smaller ones for the, uh, for the Tacomas and the Forerunner. So you may have to get slightly creative. Uh, this won't mount on the outside perfectly. So just a word of warning on that. But we're gonna sell you these. Uh, there's lots of opportunities for, to mount with these. You could actually cut them short if you needed to. They're just meant to be universal. So the sky's the limit on your mounting options.